Hi, Andy Herringshaw with Tractor Innovations, here today to show you the installation of a remote hydraulic kit on this Kubota L2501. Now this tractor already has a set of front hydraulics to run this grapple, but he wants to expand that and add a hydraulic top link and be able to run other implements on the back of the tractor. So what is normally a kit to add a, uh, the first third function on a tractor is going to be a selector valve to create this rear remote. The beauty of this system is we don't have to touch any electronics. We've got a made in the USA valve, made in the US hoses, everything complete in this kit to allow running of a rear implement and a rear cylinder off of these electronic buttons. The switching valve is going to mount right up here underneath the loader valve. When the knob is pushed in, his electronic buttons run the grapple. When we pull the knob out, it's going to run the rear implement. Really simple, no drill installation. It comes with a bracket, all the hardware you need, every hose you need to get this system completely installed. This customer also got the hydraulic top link from me. I sell these on uh, my website. Check it out, tractorinnovations.com. Uh, I carry several different links to match your tractor, and I can do custom links. Uh, my phone number's on there, give me a call, let me know what I can do for your tractor. With this kit comes complete picture instructions, and with just a few simple tools, we will be able to have this up and running um, in a very short amount of time. Before I begin, please like and subscribe this video. That helps other people find this video and improve their tractors as well. And uh, I'm going to show you all the steps from getting the tractor ready to testing it out. Here we go. All right, I've got you sitting on the floorboard of the tractor looking up underneath the loader valve. Our first step is to install this bracket that is going to hold the switching valve. So I'm going to loosen these two bolts. They are a 10 millimeter wrench. And you can actually go ahead and pull them all the way out because we are going to put the bracket on and reuse these same bolts. I've got the bracket ready to mount on. It's gonna sit right up here, pretty close over here to the cowling of the tractor. So I like to go ahead and take the long bolts out of the hardware kit and go ahead and slip them through where the valve is gonna mount. With the bolts slid in there, I can hold the bracket up in place and go ahead and thread in both of those bolts. This one over here is pretty tight up against the side. You may have to just use an open-ended open wrench to get it screwed in. All right, go ahead and tighten those up with your 10 millimeter wrench. I've uncurled all my hoses and all the hoses coming out of here are kind of gonna be pointing forward on the tractor. So I can get right up under here and it's a little tight. Take your time and get these hoses routed neatly. Take your time and work this switching valve up here and get the bolts slid through. All the hoses are gonna be up above the brake pedals there and it should fit in nice and neat. I've got the hardware out of the kit, a washer, lock washer, and nut to go on each one of these bolts holding the switching valve. And a half inch wrench and socket will tighten this right up. All right, it's time to connect the hydraulics for this selector valve unit. 
And before we disconnect anything, we want to totally eliminate all the hydraulic pressure in the tractor. Even if you did this a while ago, sometimes sitting in the sun can create a little pressure. So be sure and move this loader lever to all four positions a couple times. And since we are dealing with an electronic valve here, we do need to turn the key on and activate the button in both directions just to make sure all the pressure is out of that system. Okay, the pressure is out. We can now disconnect one of these hydraulic couplers. Now, this tractor has half inch agriculture style couplers. If you want one of these kits, I'm gonna ask you for a picture of the male coupler. Um, since these are dealer installed often, they could have Kubota style couplers instead of agriculture. Um, but if you would send me a picture of the coupler and additionally put a wrench on the hex part of this mail fitting, I will absolutely know what fitting your tractor needs. In addition, this tractor has one male, one female on the tractor. Some tractors will have two males. So a picture is really gonna help me be confident in what your tractor needs. In, in, this, on, in this case, we're gonna hook up the female here, obviously, the male there. Um, in your case, if you've got two males, you can hook it up either which way as long as you use the same pair, okay? I'll show you what I mean by that shortly. Okay, I've got these disconnected. If these were both males, I would do this one at a time. But since it's a male, female, I cannot possibly get it backwards. All right, so coming off of this switching valve, there's a three foot long hose. We've got a longer set of hoses with these couplers on them. I've got tape on here indicating that those are not tightened yet. I want you to be able to get your angle right and then tighten that fitting. So I'm gonna run these through one at a time. In all of these steps, take your time and get your hoses routed just like you want them. You can really get a professional looking installation if you take your time and get it right. Okay, I've got one, hose, one of my hoses routed underneath and ready to couple on right there, okay? When you are really satisfied with the routing, that looks really good, it's not kinked up at all. I'm gonna take off this tape and with an 11 16 and 7 8 wrench, I can tighten up that fitting right there. Be careful not to over tighten here. It seals up internally. So it just needs just kind of moderate hand pressure. You do not need to really get your arm into that. Okay, so the female coupler came off of that one right there. So I'm gonna find the shorter hose coming off of the switching valve. And it's gonna have a male fitting to go into this female. Again, take my time, route it really neatly. And it's gonna connect right back to this. Okay, half the hydraulic installation is complete. Let's repeat that step for the female that's on the tractor and the male that goes up to the grapple. locked in there. I'm going to remove this tape and tighten up that swivel fitting. Okay, the other short hose coming off of here should have a female 
to go to this male. There it is right there. Take your time with the routing and connect it up back here behind the scenes. With that, it is hydraulically connected into your third function kit, into this uh, forward third function. Only step left is to take these long rear hoses, run them underneath the floorboards and up next to the three-point hitch. We've got the remote hoses run up here next to the three-point hitch. Now's the time to get out the bracket that's going to hold those remote couplers out of this bag. And imagine where we want to mount these. So we've got a mounting bar with two holes on one end. That's where the remotes are going to go. And one hole end to go back to the tractor. So with this bar here across, this is really up to you how you want to mount it on your tractor. I have some people put it up here on the rollover protection, get those remotes way up out of the way. Um, we could also put a bend in this bar and mount it to that crossbar with a drilled hole. This toolbox already has a hole right here through it. So what we're gonna do is just take the simple option, put that hole, put that bolt through the toolbox and through this. So for that on this L2501, I need a 12 millimeter socket and loosen that bolt. All right, with the bolt out, slide your bracket in. And drop that bolt back in place. I'm now going to pre-assemble the two, I call them W brackets, into this shape right here so that we are ready to put the couplers in and tighten. So we'll pull out the rest of this hardware from the bracket kit. And we're gonna use the smallest bolts on the outside with a lock washer and that smallest nut. Put it on there just far enough so the nut doesn't fall off. Just that right there. Do that on both of your outside holes. And then the larger bolts will go through the mounting uh, bar and hold it all together and then we'll tighten this when we get it put together With your remote coupler in one hand and your assembled W brackets slide that bracket onto the coupler and you want to see about a quarter inch sticking out each side of the bracket Okay With that on there, I'm gonna finger tighten this nut just a little further so that doesn't want to fall out. I'm going to take my second one, insert it, make sure it's sticking out each side of the bracket about a quarter inch. This bracket should bite that groove in the back of that coupler. And just finger tighten here so nothing falls apart. Okay. And then we're going to bring these up here and tighten it to this bar with the half inch bolts. With this bracket bent down just a little bit and my couplers in the bracket, I'm ready to drop in this 5 16 inch bolt, put a lock washer and a nut on the bottom. That barely gets started, but that'll come a lot closer when we put some torque on it. And this back one's even a little tighter, so I think I'm going to go ahead and tighten up this front one. And that'll make room for the rear one. With 
with that singed up, oh yeah, I got room to get it on the rear bolt. Okay, the middle bolts tighten up with a half inch wrench and ratchet, the outside ones with a 7 16. We are essentially finished with the installation of the remote hydraulic kit. One good thing to do before you leave the back of your tractor is take one of your quick couplers that comes with the kit and go ahead and plug it in there. Make sure it goes in and pops out. If that's not working, your hoses might be binding up against something um, in front because the, the hoses actually do need to be able to slide just a little bit to work with this bracket. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and install this hydraulic top link since you ordered it with this kit. And that is just as simple as removing the existing manual top link. Pull out your linch pin and put the new hydraulic top link in with this base end, the uh, swivel ball that's attached to the outside of the cylinder towards the tractor, the uh, rod end out. All right, and then we are gonna go ahead and plug in the hydraulic couplers. And it is just as simple as that. I'm gonna hang this on the original hangers there just by the pipe, and now we're ready to test it. Let me show you how this remote hydraulic kit works. We already have the third function installed, so when this knob is pushed in, it's gonna work completely as normal. The two buttons on the joystick are gonna run the grapple. When I pull out on the knob, the grapple is locked in place whatever position it's in, and now my two buttons are gonna run whatever's hooked up to my rear. In this case, the hydraulic top link. So let me show you what that looks like. I'll start with the knob pushed in. All right, the knob is pushed in. I've got control of my grapple with my two electronic buttons here. When I'm ready to run something on the rear, I pull out on the knob, that grapple is locked in place. And I've got full control of whatever is hooked up to the rear. You can get a lot of functionality out of your tractor for not a whole lot of money. Check out my website and let me help you get more out of your tractor. Thanks for watching.